Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Now you may remember a couple of weeks ago, maybe three, we had a, a fascinating conversation in which people were talking about claiming their name and becoming limited companies. And I'm pleased to say that a number of people have emailed me in and they said, you know, Richard, I've done it. And I feel a real sense of freedom of being able to deal with things in a different way. Um, now, I thought it would be worth getting the gentlemen that were telling us all about this to come back because there have also been loads of questions about this, um, especially since um, I know that uh, we've had uh, Gary Waterman on who was talking about a whole load of fraud that the government are doing using Companies House to set up companies. And so I thought I might ask the lads a little bit about that because it, it has been used for fraud and we don't want to be anything to do with that because we are obviously being as honourable as we can, claiming back our name and uh, running for freedom, which is what we want. So please welcome back to the show, Alex, Tegan and Carl. Welcome back, lads. Thank you so much for coming back to agree to do a part two. No worries. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> and, and I should just mention that um, for reasons of anonymity, because of all of what's going on, that these gentlemen um, prefer to be unseen for the moment. Um, and, you know, one day when we're all free, we can all put our head above the parapet. But I shall be the one who you can throw, <laughs> you can throw the cabbages at uh, in today's show. Um, only yesterday, actually, it was I had a lovely lady come round to the house for a cup of coffee and uh, she said, oh, as a result, um, I'm limited now. And she was feeling absolutely thrilled about that. And she was able to sort of use that status when she's been dealing with difficult problems. So thank you very much, uh, chaps, for sharing this information. There's been lots of questions, but before we answer all the or ask those questions get you to answer them perhaps we should for new people who are coming along going oh i didn't see the first one and now i'm here could you just recap one of you recap what the process is and why we would do it this is basically a status correction uh, as i mentioned in the first video richard when you're born you're told this is your name you're given a name you have your birthday every year you celebrate it but you don't actually own it and this is the problem you're using something called an implied not an expressed so what we want you to do is go out and purchase that name and become expressed and when so you whenever say you, uh, yes. sorry when you when you say express or implied do you mean expressed as a company yeah well exactly so if, if you read the laws they actually have these terms in the laws where you have something called implied and expressed so, for example, uh, you're not directly stated, but it's assumed to be, you know, and you're taking full responsibility and liability for something you don't own. Well, I wouldn't want to do that, would you? I, I wouldn't no. think so, right? So by buying the name, you control the name. And that right. way, when if you look at the government website, uh, it states only one corporation can exist with that name, registered to that name. So when they're writing all caps to someone else, they can't because that company can't exist, it can only be your company, right? So either either they've mistakenly written to that, which you can ask them to clarify, or they're trying to commit fraud, violation of the Fraud Act 2006, from my understanding. I'm not a, a legal expert, so please, I'm not qualified to give legal advice, please don't uh, assume anything I say is legal advice. <laughs> yes. Disclaimer there. But uh, you know, from my understanding of reading the, the Fraud Act 2006, it, it, it's quite clear when you look at that, you know, by um, failing to disclose information, uh fraud by false representation you know these these types of things because you're representing something that you don't own you don't want to but, do that no. and by, by by doing this simple little thing where i believe it's still 14 pounds you can go buy your company you're you're in full control of it and it just gives you that protection you know i, I, I think we talked about it before where we said there's a boat out at sea you know and you you, you can't get there but when, when, when you buy it you bring it in you dock it you know you put a security team on it, you put a fence around it. No, no one's allowed in unless exactly. you give them permission to come in, you know, uh, uh, any implied contracts, then, well, then the onus is on them to prove that there is a contract actually, because you're expressing it now. I, yes. you know, I'm dormant. You're, you're, you're stating there is a contract. Uh, the onus is on them to provide that contract. Please provide it for my company filing. I don't have any contracts on my company filing. So can you please provide that? So, 
And that's, it, I mean, that, that, that's one of the, the, the key things, isn't it? If you are a, if you've bought your name as a limited company, then at other companies, and let's face it, we're in corporate Britain at the moment, and everybody seems to be a corporated company, but they have to have a contract to be able to deal with you. If they haven't got a contract, you can turn around and say, well, I haven't got a contract, I didn't sign anything, it's got nothing to do with me, there's no meeting of the minds, so leave me alone. Thank you very much. Exactly. And this, this is the problem I had personally when I was in court. Uh, and I was like, why don't they listen to me? Why, why, why aren't they hearing what I'm saying? You know, And it's because yes. I'm taking the full responsibility and liability for something I didn't own. And the second they knew I owned that, I had the title deeds to that, I had the trademarks to that, everything, they started really paying attention to what I was saying. So it, right. it does make a huge difference. It's the same when you engage with companies, be it debt collection companies, whatever, you know. Because you're now a corporation, you have a certain responsibility, yes. You have to act with honor, you have to follow the, the company's house laws and stuff like that, obviously. But the onus is on them where they can't come and just force away and abuse you in that sense, you know? You, yes. you have to say, where is this? Provide it now. I want a proper contract signed by both parties, as it states in the company's house act 2006, you know? The, these types of things. So you have a lot of protection. As I say, you have a minefield around you. And that, that, that's, that, that's great. So they have to navigate this to come at you before they can even engage with you. And if they do want to engage with you, your company can charge a fee. So you have your fee schedule in the window of your door. You know, you ask them, can they read you? They say yes. You know, you take a picture of their ID. You invoice them straight away. And they'll, you know, you, you're just there to have, you know, run your company. Run your, yeah. So, so I mean, effectively, what you've, you've been given this implied name when you were born hence the the birth certificate or the the certificate of registered birth etc you, you are of course real just as we all know a living man or woman you're now mm. when you do that you've become the director of this name with yeah. the limited liability mm -hmm. on it. It, it, it exactly so the company was always dormant let, 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 let me just make yes. that absolutely clear because i saw there was a few questions on the, the youtube uh, before that always keep this one dormant that you claim with your name so the reason we use the certified copy of an entry name is if the Sesame Trust is accessible, I haven't got access to it, disclaimer, I haven't got access to it at all. But if in the future we do gain access, we want to control that name, right? So we're purchasing yes. that, that, that's ours, we're in control of that. That's in a way, like buying a, like buying a domain name. Exactly, right? You, yeah, want, you want to own that. So what you, you want to run it, your business. Yeah, very so what, it, what it is, it's basically an off-the-shelf company. Right. Because if all, of, if all of us were made into corporations to start with, so other corporations can do actually business, it all bases itself back down to contract law. Contracts, yes. company can only do another contract with another company. Yes. They can't do a contract with you, Richard, as a man. Right. So they have to turn you into a corporation implied so you don't know that you're a corporation, but they want you to act as the director of that corporation on its behalf without them telling you that you're the director. So now what you're, because you don't have a name, that's mm. the thing. So once you've taken back your name, you now become the director and lead the way with contracts in that certain sense, because now you can go against another director, which is another man or a woman. Right. Now, if you're going against another man or a woman and they're the director, that gives you more power because you're the man and the woman going against them as a man or a woman who are both directors in corporate positions. Yes. So now you have a stronger foothold rather than being an implied company director and it's like a ghost. Now you are seen before you're not seen. Right, yes. Now, you mentioned there, you know, if everybody did this, which would be a good thing, probably. But there's going to be people who will be coming up there and saying, my name's John Smith. Oh, bother. Somebody else has already got that name. What do people do if they come across and somebody else has already got the name? Because obviously there'd be a lot of Smiths and probably a load of John Smiths and all the other variants of names. Alex? Well, I was going to actually say, Carl, over, over to you first, and you can take this one over, but the other route is is to go down with the, with the, with the Emerald Deed Poll. And that is, I mean, we, we've discussed this a few times. Obviously, the limited company process was done on a, on a learning path, which, which Carl obviously discovered this and uh, sort of started with that. But in hindsight, you could potentially and probably should start with the enrolled deed poll through the royal courts of justice because when you do the name correction there 
they, they cannot, it goes back to what Carl just said, there can only be a contract between two of the same kind. And yes. Carl has done a superb video on this. I've been listening to it. It's a couple of years old now called Switching Perceptions, where he got a handful of people and got them to read out all the, the text from the law books. And they kind of, they all read it out and read it themselves. And you see it all going click. Like, how can I be having a contract with British Gas if I'm a man and they're a corporation when the law states that you must be of the same kind, i.e. Richard and Alex, we can have a contract. I can mow your grass. You can give me £15. Yes. Alex Limited and Richard Limited could have a contract because we're two of the same kind. But how are the living men and women of this world having contracts with British Gas, BBC, Southern Electric, whoever it is they've got a contract with, a corporation and a man, it can't happen. So obviously we could talk to you in depth about why you incorporated, whether it be grammatically or because you need to have two of the same kind to do a contract. There's many different things we could but, talk about but ultimately I'll just, I'll just interject there alex sorry just go back to the questions sorry yeah so there, there, there's a number of things you could do there if, if if the company is claimed either you can go and direct the post to that person sorry whoever owns it but you know that's your responsibility uh to go out and check if, if, if you have contracts and manage that or as alex said you could change your name and ad adapt it that way if you wanted to so what also... so what yeah. So what you could, what you're saying is, you use the Enroll Deed Poll, change your name to whatever you want, and then register that as a limited company. No. Yes. No. 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 Well, you need oh, to no. register the. No. Limited. No. You could do that. You could do that. He is correct. No, yeah. You, yeah. You. Okay. Can I interject? Sorry. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, okay. Talk about the style. So, Go on. Go if you one. if you've got a John Smith, yeah. Now, usually, well, majority of people, well, some of them anyway, have a middle name. Yes. But then middle names won't be the same, for example. Right. Yeah. But because you don't have a name in the first place, you're going to the Royal Courts of Justice to actually be given a name in law because it's stamped in the day of our Lord, which is a lawful document. Right. So now, as soon as you go and get an enrolled depot, you'll get your lawful name and you'll have a name. At the moment, you're only known by your surname. That's it. You don't have a Christian name in in law eyes right okay see, because that document wasn't given to you which was a certificate of name given which when the baptism certificate that gives you your christian name so if you've got john henry smith for example yeah yeah and there's two of them what you can also do usually if you buy the limited company name you're not trademarking it no, you've just, I mean, you're just you, buying a name. There you go. So if John Smith is bought as a limited company, then other John Smith can go and get the trademark. Right. Do you see? Or they can, or they can add a name in their depot name. But no, I mean, like with the limited company, as Tegan says, if they're writing to John Smith Limited, then, or John Smith, and it's written in capital letters, if there's a John Smith Limited, that John Smith can then forward the mail or forward it back to the sender to say, well, you need to send it to the correct company. This is their address, blah, 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 right on the front of the envelope and send it back, return to sender. So so what is, so, so if you're having unwanted problems, let's say, with, I don't know, the council tax or a government official or whatever, and they've written to you and they've written to this limited company, mm -hmm. but you have un been unable to get the limited company name you could send it to some some other person who well as, Te well as tegan said there's two different ways you can do this yes um, one way you can send it you can forward it on or return back to send it to send and tell them to this isn't the company you need this yes. address. or you can trademark it and then send the sender a letter to say um stop using the trademark basically and if you carry on there's going to be a fee schedule right Okay. So both ways, Tegan, did you want to explain a little bit of that? Oh, oh yeah. Or, or you can ask it just to come to an agreement and you both, do you mind both using it? Some people are happy to do that. Not everyone is, you know, so mm. there, there's a number of ways around it, but I, I, I find it best to be in control of a, a, a title deed. Uh, I'll call it yourself. Yes. Totally. Yes. So totally. I, I find you get a lot more protection. So if you get, someone can't write I, something nasty to you or something come after you, you know, if you presumably some, 
some people will be using their name to trade as a business anyway. You know, exactly. that would be John Smith. He may be a painter, and he, that's that's his cab. John Smith Limited, painter, decorator to the world. Yeah, but yeah. Usually, usually most people would put painter at the end, and they would actually trade that and get that as a limited company. They won't just do John Smith because they're not thinking about just doing John Smith. Right. They're so, thinking so, about doing John Smith Painters Limited. Yes. Do you so see? The, yeah. Chances are there's more opportunity for people who've got their just take their birth name there with them with the combination of the middle name. Yes. What yeah. what what about people who are uh, women uh, who are married, and they've got they've had a birth name. Obviously, they might have been uh, let's say Liz Smith for the sake of argument, but now they're Liz Jones because they've been married. What would you advise those people to do? I, I, I've advised people to get both. So at the moment, it's quite cheap to buy the, the limited company. It's like £14 approximately. I think it's going to change later to up to £70, but at the moment, it's still £14 wow. pounds the last time I checked. So it's no harm buying both. Look, you, you do two statements a year, you know? You're filing mm. in your confirmation statement, and it takes less than five minutes. You know, I, I have a video up in the group that shows you how to do it. It's like a 30-second video, actually. You know, mm. it's, it's so simple to do. And that, right. that way you're in, you're in control of both. You can use both whenever you want because some people still go back to the other names. They revert back after, you know? Yeah, so, so if they it, got, it's completely if they up got to them. divorced and, and yeah, something it, like that, they'd say, oh, I'm going to come back to my my maiden name. The most, the uh, most, uh, absolutely. The, the most important one is the maiden name, is the birth certificate name. Because right. Everything is built upon that foundation. Okay. So no disrespect to any married couple, but really and truly, as we mentioned before, they're not married. It's two corporations that have been married together. Ah, uh, yes. Like, like Sony and Panasonic. Yes. You see, so the marriage is just the two implied companies being married together, not the men and women. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes that makes sense. You've now got Sony Sonic instead of the two <laughs> the two thing well you, you know, know. And, no, yeah and that's it. what's effectively happened to the to the woman anyway because she usually carries the the man's surname this is the thing and, yeah yeah, yeah. so oh, if, okay. if, you get, if you get the birth name you're you're fully protected as the woman right do you see so, okay I'm, so yeah i'm let I, just just to uh bring this to the end of this section um so people have gone and they've gone okay uh, my name's John Henry Smith, as, as we said earlier. Um, they've registered their name. They've followed all the things. They've managed to find where the dormant bit is, which isn't actually very easy unless you know to put 9999, I think, in as a... Yeah. As a search. Yeah, yeah. You can just search, search dormant, actually. So if it says, okay. what, is your, what is your company going to be doing? And you just search, oh, search right. dormant, it will bring back so, that SIC code, that company operational code, and you can click it then. Right, brilliant. So you've got to the end of the process, you've paid your money, you've pressed send and you've got these confirmation emails coming back to you. What happens next? Yeah, so depending on when you uh, buy it, so if it's on the weekend, you'll probably most likely get your certificate of incorporation on the next Monday, because normally it takes about 24 hours for someone to send it out to you. It's a and that's in the post? It's done digitally. Uh, well, my ones are all done digitally. I think anything in the oh, post right. I okay. do. Um, and then what happens is sometimes you get something called a, a UTR number from HMRC. This is a company tax number. Now, if you do get this, not everyone gets it, but sometimes they do send it out. What we do is we cross out the name, address, and the UTR number. You make a copy of it. We sign it and date it, uh, write dormant on it, and send it back to them. So the UTR number is essentially what they're trying to use as your national insurance number equivalent for the company. That's essentially what it is. And that is sent by post, is it? That is sent by post. So yeah. you, you want to send that back. And then also uh, you'll get something called an authentic Is it authentication code from HMRC, uh, Carl? No. Um, or activation code. Authentication yeah. code comes from our company's house. That's like your password to your... The activation account. code, is it? Sorry, yeah. yeah. It comes a bit from like a HMRC. Bit, a bit like a Facebook account or something like that. You have a password. They send you a password. When, when you do the company, you're going to receive three or four letters over the following weeks. One will be a, you've got to pay attention because they all look very similar, the, the crests and the details, but you'll get one, one, maybe two from HMRC and you'll get a few from Companies House. Companies House and HMRC are completely separate jurisdictions. Companies House is England and Wales. 
HMRC is over in the United Kingdom. So it's the HMRC one. Everything should be kept because you now keep files. Get yourself a little file and keep your documents there so that you've got them to refer to later. But when you get the, the envelope from HMRC addressed to you, or will it be addressed to you or is it to the limited company that that comes? Yeah, the limited company. It's yeah, lim- yeah. both names, right? Both you, names, yeah, because you, you don't I, even I mind here. Yeah. You don't even need to notify HMRC when you purchase a company name from Companies House. Companies House write to HMRC and they write to you, and they'll send you, as you said, the UTR number. It's the equivalent of a national insurance number for for the living man. So it's it's your it's your tax reference code. In the bottom <coughs> left hand corner, it will say CT four one G, which is corporation tax four one G form, and we quite simply put a line through the name and address. Nothing fancy. I remember when I first did it, everybody was saying, oh, do you do a cross or is it... Just cross it out and put your name and you date it and you sign it and you just put dormant and you send it back to them, recorded delivery, you take a photo. It doesn't have to be a recorded delivery. They give you a a free return envelope. So you just keep a copy yourself. You can do recorded delivery if you want to cop, but you don't have to. And then this is called an activation code as well you get from them. So is you, that you for the keep, activation? You, it's the activation of corporation tax, right? Yeah, you don't need that, but I would advise you to keep it for your company filing. Uh, mm-hmm. So you're you're going to be dormant. You're not going to need it, obviously, but to just keep it for your company filing. But once you've done that, you don't hear from HMRC again. Yes. No. That, that, you, that. But you will hear from Companies House, uh, yeah. and normally how they do is they'll write to you in the your your name, and then they'll put your company name below it. Uh, or they could just write to your company. So you, sh- you should definitely uh, open them. And then you get something called an authentication code uh, from Companies House. And this allows you to log on to your web filing. And this is where you can log on to do basically your filings every year. If you need to update your information as a director or address or anything like that, you, you can do that all through the web filing. It's quite easy to do. So if you move, if you move house... Um, exactly. You, as, assuming you've put that as your registered company address, I, I guess. Yeah. Well, you've yeah. got to do, you, you, you've got to do two things basically. You've got to do two things every year. When you get your limited company, we start with the limited company. When you get your limited company every year, mm. from um, when you get an envelope on the front of the envelope, you'll have company's house stamped on the envelope. Yeah. So you know it's a company's house. Any um, any anything what's addressed to it should be always addressed to your limited company. Not just your name, just right. always your limited company. So, with the company's house, you'll get an authentication code. That authentication code will allow you to get into your company account, as the guys were saying just there. But every year, you do you've got to go in there and do your um, filing and your confirmation statement. There's two things you've got to do every year. Yeah. And when you say you're filing, what do you what are you actually filing? So what happens basically is like every company gets a file put into it and that's your share we're not too sure what that is just yet but when we do a a search on where do companies file come from they come from the hm treasury so all companies so when you do your filing even though it's a dormant company you're still filing a file from the treasury right so what would you i mean if i'm filing something it's usually a bit of paper into an envelope or something or a folder. Sure. What mm-hmm. what is what does it mean then? You go online. It's a share. And... It's a share you're getting. Yes. Basically, okay. Let's just take it back a little bit and go a bit slowly. Okay. So when every year, this time of the year, April, they do the tax year. Mm. Right. Every year, everybody gets a share put into their name, but they don't claim it. When you go right. and do the limited company, that share then gets put into your company rather than going into the crown pot. And it's a share of money. It's it's a share, it's a share of... of the resources. We can't call it money. It's a share of the resources of the earth. Because right. if we look at the 95% of the planet, they're religious and it's a religion. Yeah. So they say God has given us the earth. So whatever yeah. comes out of the earth has to be shared evenly right so what's happening the crown has their pot so every year because we're put into and under the united kingdom with our birth certificate that allows that share to go into united kingdom so they get our share 
But when we take ourselves out of the United Kingdom and we become our own limited company, Companies House puts that share into our company now, not United Kingdom Limited. Ah, right. So in other words, what you're saying is that for the last 60 bloody years, Mm -hmm. the government have been taking whatever I was entitled to and putting it in their pot. Sure. But from this moment on, if I've done my registered company and all that, it's they don't get it. I, it goes in my pot. That's why you do your filing every year. That's why I do now, it. Right. Understood. Three months later, you'll do a confirmation statement. Now, the confirmation statement is just to prove that somebody's alive and somebody's directing the company and there's a living entity. Oh, right. Okay. So now that living entity gets to use that file and can uh, then draw shares out of that file. Because the conversation we had is, well, with that one file or the file, what's there, how many shares can you draw? Out of that one file, you can draw 100, 100,000, a million, whatever, as long as you log it on the confirmation statement. But that goes deeper down the line. Yes. You see. But the main thing we want to look at really is, okay, so you've got the UTR number, you've got the authentication code. That allows you to do that in your account. Right. The activation, they, they, they sneakily kind of like identically have the names hmrc now they'll have their envelope hmrc will print their sticker on the front of the envelope they'll address it to your limited company now sometimes if you've made the company dormant already as tegan mentioned earlier if you made the company dormant already sometimes they might not send you a utr number they may just send you an activation code yeah sounds very similar to the authentication code but this is an activation code the activation code is because they know your company's dormant as alex said earlier on company's house lets hmrc know um because uh your your company's dormant basically they've gone and done uh they're trying to get you to activate it are you so that you're no longer dormant there you go if you choose to start trading Yes, or, or you can then activate it, but you will get a brand new UTR number. You won't get the old new UTR number because once you make that dormant, that's that's deleted, done, burnt, basically. Right. Yeah, and or, just or, uh, for reference, UTR stands for unique tax reference number. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Tegan. Also, just to to answer the question in another way as well, you said what what's the filing about? The way that it manifests itself on the front end is this because a lot of people were turning around going, oh well, why do I need to do files and I don't need to do tax or I don't need to do anything because the tr- company's not trading and all yes. this stuff. Well, hang on a minute. What you do, you go in, you do the confirmation statement, which is, you just like Carl said, saying I'm alive, there, still living, still dormant, all the rest of it. You go in, when you do the files, what, what happens is you're, there's there's four options come up on the screen and you don't go to any of them other than filing accounts for a dormant company. And when you go in, so you, you're not filing accounts like some, you need an accountant or anything like that. It's yeah, because you not very, traded. Yeah, it's a very simple process. You're not trading, but you still have to go in and say, you know, the value of my shares is this, and this is how many, and this, this. There's about eight or nine boxes. You go through and you submit it. If there's any errors, it will flag up and tell you, look, this isn't right. You readdress it. You submit it, and a day later you'll get, you know, your accounts have been accepted. And that's it. It's a very, very, very short process. Right, the Wait. main, the, sorry, Alex, the main, right. thing we, the main thing we tell people to do when they are doing their filing is call companies' house themselves and ask them to go through it with you yes. because they're happy to go through it with you. They're professional, and they're professionals. They're the one who knows how to do the job. So once you've called them, let them go through it with you a couple of times once a year i mean like you do once i've i've had my company this is nine years this year so it's like i still call them up and i'm going to be calling them up in a in a few weeks to do my filing just see i still call them up nine years later right because you're not really sometimes you you can remember it sometimes you don't yeah no absolutely and and, and alex said something about like you know the the value of your shares i mean um the shares, how would you know what the value of the shares are? Well, that's that basic. Again, this is the thing. You've got to go and speak to a legal team to be able to allow you to get into your account and see what's in your account. You, you, you also set the value when you're creating the, the company, right? Yeah. It, it, it asks you, 
uh, when, when when you're setting up the company, the value of the shares. I put my shares as just one pound, for example. Yeah, just one order. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Because it yeah, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many shares you order out of your file. Each share will be one pound. Right. Do you see? Yeah. I, I mean, I just want to keep this very simple sure, for sure, people, sure. so that people don't think, oh, my God, this sounds so complex. I, I don't no. see the value of this. Um, so the main, if, the main the main thing with the, with the UTR number, basically, if you wanted to. Sorry, go on and say what you were going to say. Sorry. Well, well, yeah, I was yeah. just I, I was yeah. simply just going to quickly recap to say that from, from from my understanding, what you guys have said is the advantage of having the limited name is that you've claimed your name. A, nobody else can have it. B, you can deal with these big corporations and turn around and say, actually, we don't have a contract, so I don't need to pay all these bills that you keep sending me. The process is actually very quick. You get a, some letters in the post. You've got one with the UTR, which you you simply cross out and send back with your name, as you just described. And then uh, later on, a year later, um, and uh, I guess you're notified when you've got to do it, or would yeah. you? Yeah, they'll yeah. email. They'll they email. Send you email, email. And, and, and letter. Yeah, there, yeah. there is and, a fine if and, you do it late. Right. So then you go through the process. One is the filing thing, which, as you said, Carl, ring them up and just take them through it. And that would probably be the easiest for most people. Yeah. And, the, and the second one is really just the saying, yeah, I'm, I'm still in control. I haven't died. That's it. Um, and, 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 that's and really like you moved house, as you said, if you, you, and you change and you your need address to or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And or if you suddenly have, you know, a brilliant brainwave that you can make you an absolute fortune that you want to start trading, there you, you go. could do. And, and you do that. But you wouldn't, as Tiga mentioned earlier on, you wouldn't trade under your name. You would create another company to trade with. Right. Oh, okay. So, for example, yeah. if you have John Henry Doe as your certified copy of an entry, that's dormant. And you could just have John Doe yeah. trading. Mm. Yeah. But can I just clarify it? This, I don't think they answered the difference between confirmation statement and filing, just, just to be absolutely clear. So mm. uh, a company filing, that's basically all the documents and information that a company is legally required to submit to company's house, right? Yeah. So your annual accounts or your confirmation statement, uh, you know, a confirmation statement is just a statement that confirms the accuracy of the company information in the public register. Uh, an annual account is just a detailed report of the company's financial performance. So obviously you're not trading. You're not earning anything. You're you're you're, you're specifying that. You know, you're telling them yes. about the company structure. So who the directors are, the company officers, secretaries, uh, the the company address. Uh, the company filing will have like your registration documents will all be there in case you lose them. You can log on and download them all again. You know, your event based filings will all be there. You know, so that that's essentially what's there when you log on to company's house. It's just a, an organized library of everything you have and everything you submit. That's and it, it, it's nice they host it all for you you know and remember and, and remember like it, it does even if it sounds at all daunting to you because say if old mavis is listening to this at 65 years old and she's not very computer literate well the you leave of this mavis is, alone poor hey, mavis. mavis is all right and when i sort her out watch this so a there's a whole community of us that have done this and are doing this and have been doing it for some time that people can be in touch with and b even if you're not sure what to do, like Carl said, pick up the phone and have a nice conversation. Be very open and honest with Companies House and HMRC and just say, I'm just trying to, well, Companies House, actually, not HMRC. Companies House do the filing and the confirmation statement. So ring them up and just say, I've got this dormant company. It's that time of year again. I need to submit my accounts and I'm doing my confirmation statement. Could you just talk me through it, please? And they will be so nice and so friendly and they will talk you through it step by step so if you think it sounds a bit daunting don't worry because the professionals are on the other end of the phone worst case scenario and now I, i'm glad you said that alex because so many people have conversations with corporate entities these days and they're very much uh, antagonistic mm -hmm. or they're trying to get money out of you and all of that so it's not so it's nice to know that there is one body of the government <laughs> that actually is going to be on your side well, and well, help you for a remember, change re re remember the reason that everyone seems so daunting and it's all such a nightmare is because they're probably dealing with people within the the legal side of things which is the united kingdom it will always be confusing and an absolute pickle designed to keep you broken in fear whereas mm. when you're going over to company's house now now you're going direct to the king 
and you're dealing with it's a completely separate it's we, we speak about it as the united kingdom being the abbot and his gang of thugs and company's house being that you're dealing direct with the king and you're not no longer subject to the abbot and all his thugs over in the legal world right oh well that, so that, that... that's why it's more helpful because it's you're dealing with with the real law rather than all the legalese stuff which is just it's all yes. it's chaotic for a reason it's absolutely. just absolutely ridiculous now, um, I think it was Tegan who mentioned that if you don't file it in on time, you get a fine. Mm. If you don't do it, does it lapse and you lose the name, or do you have to purposely go in and dissolve the company if you so you know if you found it too much and you think, oh God, I I I wish I hadn't done this for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, what happens is you get something called struck off on the public register. So when you <laughs> register the company, it goes in the gazette. Struck off. Yeah, exactly. You get you go in the, the local gazette and they tell everyone this is now a limited company, you know, so someone can't argue. I didn't know that you were a limited company. They can search you on the public record, you know. Yes. And so what, what happens is uh, you won't get struck off immediately. You, you know, they'll chase you. They're very nice about it. The, 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 they'll send you reminders and everything like that. And then the, what happens is if you search on um, company's house or the government search uh, for a company, it will go confirmation statement late or company filing late. And then after about another couple of months, you would get struck off, they call it. And then they put that in the Gazette and then they obviously issue you a, a fine in, in regards to that. But as I said, it takes 30 seconds to do it. It's not complicated. I no, know we're talking no. about a lot of stuff here. It is really not complicated. I have a video on the group chat, about mm -hmm. 30 seconds long on how to do it. You know, it's very, very simple. It talks to you through it step by step. Oh, br yes, brilliant. I had another question that's now just uh, vanished out of my mind, which was... Um, no, no, uh, no problem. Do you, do you mind if I just clarify about the, the shares as well? Uh, well Please do. About your question. So uh, how, how companies work, you know, how, how they value the share. So you've got something called earnings per share, for example. And this is essentially um, a measure of the performance of a company's profit, essentially be allocated to an outstanding share. And this often indicates how the company is growing and the profitability and stuff like this. So potentially a lending to higher share values. So this is the reason I tell people to get the certified copy of an entry name, because if they did create that trust in that name as trading on the market, obviously, you know, you want to make sure you have the, the rights to that if, if, if possible. Mm -hmm. You also have something called a price to earnings, I believe, ratio. And that just compares a company's share price to its earnings per share. But that's only if you're trading. So. I wouldn't worry about that, you know, or you have market based things, if, if market capitalization, market ratios or discounted yeah. cash flows, I wouldn't worry about them, though, because your company's not trading. The, yeah. the main point is just block their access to the Sester trust, you know, that's what we want to do, essentially. Um, are, you, you mentioned it's on the public record. So presumably when you do this process of limiting your company, mm -hmm. you, you people can search to see if you are there. Mm -hmm. uh, they can yes. go in and see if Joe Bloggs is there. Would that also put up your address, your home address, if you've registered it? Fantastic question, actually, yes. So on the process, it will. It will be on the public uh, register. So what I do for myself personally, I have something called a ghost mail. That's the actual company's name. And they offer you a package where you can have either the registered company address there or both. You can have the director's correspondence address there. Uh, as like a company office address and you register with them and that way that address is on the public but what you can also do then is say that's the, on the public register but send me all the confirmation letters and everything to my personal address which they don't share yes that, yeah, that, so... that, that costs around 50 to 70 pounds a year uh, i believe right. or you can pay companies house like for example if you search google a lot of the time the director's information is private or person of significant control, certain companies are private. I think you can go to company's house and pay them like a hundred pounds or something to mm. hide the information. Yeah. Right. But just be aware if it is in the public domain, it does not get deleted. Even when you update the address or anything, it's it's in all in the, the record history. Right. So just if, if you were somebody who had for, for whatever it say, a husband and wife and, and, you know, you'd had a problem and you'd whatever and you didn't want the husband to know your address because you've moved or he was a stalker or abuser or something like that. You I do need to spell address then. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So whatever circumstance. So that was that thing. The other thing well, is, can I just can I just drop in there for one second? Of course. Um, yes. I totally agree with what Tegan's saying. But there is the other avenue as well. 
The reason, I mean, I, I've got mine down at my home address. The b- reason being is that if any company searches you and they're looking for that company and it's tied to your address, then they know they've got the right one, basically. So now if you're saying that's not me and you've got a ghost mail, they don't know if it's you or not because it's not your address. If you right. put your address and you're saying that's not me and they look at your address, that's not you because there's a limited company here. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. So, so, you're, so, you're, so you're protecting yourself away from a lot of the limited companies by having your address down. Forget the forget the stalkers and all that business. Ain't got yeah. a, the stalkers could come around all day long. I ain't got a, I ain't got a problem with that. But you're getting companies coming to me, uh, claiming that they've got a contract with me. No, you. This is my address. Come around and see me. I want you to see. Me. I want you to know my address. I want you to come and see me. Yeah, it's not claiming. You, got, you see what I'm saying? I'm not, I don't care if anybody knows my address or not. It's just a limited company. It's the other companies, so they should know your address. That's the only reason I would say put your address down. But Tegan and them got guys got different ways of doing can I, things. Can I respond to that? Yeah, yeah. yeah sure, so sure. What, what you can do is you can have a, a company office in your house, Carl, or apartment. Yes, totally, yeah? totally, totally. And and, and th- that way you you can have a company plaque on the door saying like, yeah. this is. So if they do come by, they'll see yeah. it is a company still. It's just that the company's main address, like you know, yes. you have company headquarters, for example, totally, right? Totally. But they've got multiple offices all over the country. They don't specify every location all the time, right? Yeah, no. So but the thing you about, can no, have a company wait, wait, office. Yeah, yeah, but wait a minute. We're not talking about companies. We're talking about us. We're talking about our name. We're not talking about British Gas. We're not talking about Dun and Bradstreet or any of them lot. We're talking about our name. So if anybody's coming after our name, you want to be certain that you have facts that they're looking for that name. Because if they're looking for that name, then they're only looking for your trademark. So you're going after them with that name. Do you see? At that address, that is. I can understand. I mean, that's why I say to people, okay, if you're going to do a company, put box to, put a shoebox on your step and write Yeah, box. but we're, we're just giving people the choice, right? So they can there you go. Oh, do of course. that yeah. if they want to. It, but we, have, we have to give them that choice. That's the thing about it, because you've got to look at it in both scenarios. And yes, no, I, I, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely get it. I mean, some people may just want to protect the name because they think it's uh, the right thing to do. Totally. Uh, and, and they may, for whatever reason, not want to show it. And then, OK, then they have the problem that you said, Carl, if the companies are coming for. But most people probably will put their uh, normal address because they want the reason they're doing it is to stop councils or government bodies or enforcement officers and saying well you're looking for sure. this individual but this is a company here but what so- on, on top of what tegan just said just there was about um you can with company's house because you can make your address and details private there's nothing if you if you're going to do that you might as well have your name and address down if you're going to make it private from the start mm-hmm. as tegan was saying because then if any companies try and go and look for that address, then they're going to have to go to company's house and blah, 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 whatever. Yes. Do you see? No, a, a, a general stalker or someone ain't going to go to company house just to find your address if it's private. No, they may not oh, even know. Another, a general another, stalker may not know you're li- limited anyway. Another, yeah. another thought on this, because I have actual experience of this, so I can say this. When you set the company up, you will have a certificate of incorporation. That certificate of incorporation will always have the address that you use to set the company up. It will be there forever, even if you change your address or what, blah, blah. It's always going to be there on your mm. files. You mm. can't get rid of it. You can get rid of it on the file headers, but when they click on the PDF, yeah. that incorporation document will always have that first address. So what you could do um, is you could set it up initially with In a ghost knowledge. mail, with a ghost yeah. mail. So that that's that bit of information that will never be erased. That's right. And then moving forward, you could just change your address to your home address. Yeah. And you could make it publicly available. Then, if you ever want to remove it, you can actually remove it from the public record mm. because it's not on the incorporation document. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. once you've set it up on the incorporation document. That is written in stone. That is not going anywhere. And I, the problems are this. If, from my point of view, if I look at this, okay, if, you, if you've come out of, like you said, the abusive relationship or you're really private, you don't want anyone to Google your name and loads of people know your exact name and would be likely to do that and you want to hide it, then do consider the ghost mail. However, 
if a government body wants to send you a fine or something, you could end up getting that fine come through and then you just have to deal with it in the usual format. And this is something that I've experienced personally. And I believe that at the time, had I had my address there, I don't think that that would have come to me. And I've actually now put mine back up there. So I've now associated my address again. But Mm. my address will always be there because I incorporated originally at that address. I can't get rid of that. So it is something to consider. Um, But I think the openness when it comes to people trying to deal with you, it's like Carl said, it is good. If they put your name in or they put your address in, they can see that that's where it is and it it shuts it down. But you're not going to have privacy. Flip side to that, in this day and age, do we really have privacy anyway? Well, we absolutely don't. If somebody wants to find you, they're going to find you, I think, unless you're really good, you know. Mm. So it's, it's always a consideration. Like Tegan said, it's giving them the choice. And that's what this whole process is about. Totally. It's giving you a choice. Do you yeah. want remember, to contract? Rem- just remember, know that you ain't done nothing wrong. Mm. Full stop. You have yeah. not done nothing wrong. And this is talking to everybody. You have not done anything wrong. So you ain't got nothing to hide. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, this isn't a dodge or a mysterious, you know, down a loophole or anything. This is a a legitimate thing for people to do to claim their name. And protect themselves. And protect themselves. Let me let me ask you this then. Um, When you go through the process, um, how are there any questions or any way of uh, do you have to do you have to identify yourself as you go through this? How does Company House know whether you really are john henry smith and not you know gail this this goes back to the guy that you've had on recently as well that now and i I will let one of the lads take this this question but i would just like to say it's very interesting that since this process has started we've now got people coming around saying oh we've got to adjust companies out because there's lots of fraud going on well in answer to that I would say this. Yeah, there is a bit of fraud going on. Why don't you start with United Kingdom Limited, City of London Limited and England Limited. Don't worry about all these fraudulent things and this, that and the other that they're trying to make out. Yes, there's a lot of fraud going on and people can set up a company very easily. I understand that. However, look at the big boys and what they've done. And I think that's why this is coming in. So, you know, chop, chop, ladies and gentlemen. Things are changing. More changes I think the largest amount of change in the last 160 or 180 years to Company's House or something, that it, it's there's monumental things going on there mm, at the very right. same time that we're doing this. So you I know. mean, presumably it would be difficult for people to authenticate themselves because some people wouldn't necessarily just want their, as Carla said, you wouldn't necessarily, if you're a painter, you wouldn't necessarily want to be John Smith the painter. Um, John, John Smith Limited, you might be John Smith painting or whatever and, and there's no birth certificate that says john smith painter it would they, be a bit they don't ask you for any identification right to set okay. up a company yeah i mean like see would you really need identification to set up bursting bubbles limited not really do you see and it's the same it's the same thing a name is just a legal fictitious entity that's it Unless you've got that as a lawful certificate, which is your enrolled depot, then it's always going to be a legal fictitious entity. That's what you are. Yes. Tegan, you want to say anything on that? Yeah, just just to know they are actually going to start requesting you to provide your passport, actually, to prove who you are on Companies House. These are new um, regulation regulation laws coming in. Are they? Because... um, uh, as Alex mentioned, there's a major shakeup going on. And as you correctly mentioned, the I believe the police officer had gone before or something discussing the fraud of the system. They've yeah. built this entire system on fraud and racketeering. Totally. Right? And once you clock on to what they've done, <laughs> and now you're able to fight back, it, it, mm-hmm. it pulls the carpet out from underneath them. Totally. But what do they do? The whole legalese system is built on this, right? Everyone agrees that you have a straw man. Everybody agrees that it's a corporation. It's a fictitious character. But no one ever thought to claim it, right? See, that, that's what's so interesting out there. No one ever bothered just to go out and claim it. It was available the whole time and no one did it. Now they argue, oh, this is crown copyright. Can't do that. You don't have a clue what you're talking about if you say that statement because copyright is just a document itself, like your articulate work or your email or something like that. Your music, that's copyright. 
So just to clarify at the moment, mm. there's a difference between copyright, trademark, you know, a trademark is, is a mark mm -hmm. or a property in itself. And then you have the company, the name, you're claiming that name. So don't get attached to the name. You have to detach from the name. Oh, really? That's all it is, is a name and you're claiming it. But going back to where it was with the, the fraud, basically, as I said, once you register a company, only one company can have that registered name. But when you go, for example, and look at mortgage documents, there could be 10,000 John Doe's. There could right. be how many people with the same name. Mm. And you see what they've done now. They don't know what to do once there can be only one express company that name. There you go. The whole system basically is just collapsing mm. now. Totally. So, so uh, they, they just... set up, they've set up masses and masses of fraudulent companies, entities, everything for years and years and years and years. We come along suss this out a little bit, start doing it, all of a sudden, whoa, hang on a minute, there's loads of fraud going on. Mm, yeah. Yeah, don't okay. look at us. Yeah, that must be, yeah. The, the, they don't do anything good for us. They're not looking after us. We've no. sort of figured out what's going on here. So now they've got to go, oh, there's a lot of fraud. Yeah, the, the main amount of fraud going on is committed by them. Right. We just figured it out, that's all, and protected so ourselves. Okay, so you don't need to identify yourself so anybody can sit no. down there and, and do all that. Yeah. How, when, once you've got done this process, does this this new limited version of you, uh, is that appearing on your passport, on any other official documents that you might need to renew? No, no. Well, it does, limited doesn't go down. Tegan, did you want to, do you want to explain that about passport? Um, so essentially, when you get a passport, right, how, how would you start to get that passport? You would use the certified copy of an entry or the birth certificate of people who don't yeah. know the other name, right? But on the document, it states that's not a valid form of ID. So how are yes. you getting a valid form of ID from a document that isn't valid? <laughs> yes, it's an absurdity. Yeah, right? I you mean, the only, the only ID that I can give you is actually me. That's, it, that, but, you know, effectively, this is flesh and blood. There we are. That identifies me because this is a unique thing. Anything it. else is a copy of me or a written version of me, but it's not me. There you go. Exactly. And if you look at a passport, it's in it's all caps. Yes. They nearly always put the name first, like a ship, you know? The surname, so the surname first. is first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yes. Sorry, the surname is first. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and then they have the name below. So you have the ship's name. And then you would have, like, for example, the master of the ship's name. So it's interesting if you look at the, the old, old ways of merchant trading and how they did certain things and how they created the documents and what it is now. I believe, mean, Carl, you can go into what a passport actually is in maritime law if you want to. Yeah, well, passports just a contract, I mean, a war contract, commerciability. Um, and basically, it just holds all the information, like the cargo, the name of the ship, the name of the captain or the master of the ship. It's got loads of things. That's what a passport is, really. Disease. So again, it's the only way you're going to change that up really is if when you go and get your depot, because remember, as Tegan mentioned there, your passport was made from your birth certificate. So yes. your birth certificate is a legal, it's not a lawful document. So you don't have a lawful passport. When you go and get your enrolled depot and then you go and get your passport with your enrolled depot, change name as an adult, now you get a lawful passport because right. they put in the lawful name in the passport. Okay. They won't write it. They won't write it in uppercase and lowercase. They will still write it in capitals, but they're giving you the adult name. They're not giving you the child's name no more. And there's a difference. Right. Okay. Well, we won't get into the enrolled depot because no. we're coming to the Not end yet. of the, sure. the, the, the hour. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't want to confuse people. But so in other words, I, I, all I was just really wondering is once you've done this limited company and you've got this limited net, it's not going to appear on these other documents, you know, no, on your no. passport, you no. know, John Smith limit all the time. No, 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 no I, I, absolutely not. You uh, can... can I just give you the de definition of a, a passport on Black's Law for Dictionary? I just have it up here, you know, and it says maritime. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, so it says passport, maritime, a document issued to a neutral merchant vessel by her own government during the uh, progress of, uh, of a war to be carried on a voyage to evidence her nationality and protect her against the, the cruisers or belligerent powers. Uh, this uh, paper is otherwise called a pass, a sea pass, a sea uh, letter, a sea brief, and it usually contains the captain or the master's name 
the residence, the name, uh, property, description, tonnage, and destination of the ship, and the nature and quantity of the cargo, so the place from where it comes and its destination with such other matters as practice of the, the place it requires. So that's very interesting if you think about it, because if you look at um, Article 6 of um, human rights law, it says everyone has a right to freedom of movement. Oh, sorry, not Article 6, Article 13. Everyone has a right to freedom of movement and residence within uh, the, the borders of each state and has a right to leave any country, including their own. It doesn't mention anything about you needing an identification to travel. Mm. Only boats do that. They're on the sea. You're traveling over the sea. And it's just it's, it's kind of freaky how they tied all this down to us, you know, and we just accepted and never thought, why do I need that? Why am I using that document, you know? Yeah, it's a I mean, it's a very deep subject, isn't it? That fascinates so many people. And uh, it can uh, take a long time to unravel it. But I think we're we're pretty much out of... Uh, we've got a few more minutes left before the hour is up. Is there any um, last-minute thing, just about the process or about the... the just to put people's mind at ease, um, I can't think of any more personal questions myself. Yeah, I, I had a, a question asked to me, or I saw, sorry, on your um, YouTube channel. So people with benefits, I've been asking, if they claim the, the limited company in their name, will their benefits stop? It uh, won't stop if the company's dormant. Yeah, you cannot right. open a company bank account. The second you open a company bank account, even though it's zero balance, they'll consider the company trading. So you can't even have a company bank account. Don't do that because it won't be considered dormant. Mm -hmm. yes. But as long as it's dormant, you're not trading. So far, no one has been impacted, from my understanding. And if you are already trading uh, as a self, tra you know, as a one man band, you're a sole trader and you've already got something with HMRC, will that change your status with M HMRC when you come to do your taxes at the end of the year? Should you oh, wish do you to wanna, do that? Do you want to specify the different entities, Carl? Well, the thing about it, I mean, like, again, if you're remember, there's there's separate entities. If you yeah. choose to t to be involved with that and act as a self-employed being mm. under their national insurance number, for example, fine, you can do that because a limited company is a completely separate entity. Right. If you so no if you choose to then trade as that limited company, then th then everything's it's different. Again. Do you see? But so yes. it's up to you. It's the cards are in your hand. But as Tegan says, and as Alex says, and I say, as long as you keep the company dormant. Everything's fine. The only the thing you're looking to do, basically, and what we're doing here is stopping contracts with all the different companies that claim they have a contract with us. We're just yes. doing that. Forget government bodies for a moment. We can get to that because the government is nothing to do with private companies. Right. Just and that's the key thing, Chris. You, you are claiming your private company. This is it. Because it goes, I suppose, where some people might get confused is that thing, well, it's company's house, isn't that the government thing? And you're kind of sub being now... Sub well, it's, it's, uh, it's the monarch. That's the thing about it. So it's like, OK, company's house belongs to the Crown. It doesn't belong to the United Kingdom government. Right. The United Kingdom government is the Chancellor, and the Chancellor was the King's conscious. But he broke away from the King's crown. And the Chancellor has his own courts now, which is the Chancery. But that's going off his own conscious, not the King's conscious. But we won't get into that because that goes down. Yeah. And all, all, but, also, you get you get a lot of people, they sort of go, um, they, they, they think that they're, they're becoming a limited company. That's not what's happening here. No. You're simply getting a name. You're buying the name. And You're taking like, charge. Yeah, Carl, Carl, we always say, you say, look, you don't have a name. People out there, will be, oh, no, I do have a name. No, what happens is it's like when you get a car, so Vauxhall will go along to the DVLA and give the manufacturer statement of origin to the DVLA. The DVLA will take those details, put them onto a V5 document, mm -hmm. give you that and tell you that you are a registered keeper. Now, when your mum came along and baby Vogues was born and then she uh. went back to... Red, oh, <laughs> baby robes, you know. Didn't even have any hair then, mate. No, like no. Me. So, anyway. All right, all right. Don't worry, man. Listen, the majority of we don't have hair, all right? Tegan, bad boy. Anyway, um, so when you're born, you know, yeah. you, don't, you don't have the name because what happens is your mum goes along and gives the name to the superintendent registrar. They yeah. then give her back 
the equivalent of a V5 document called a certified copy of an entry, and you're now a parent or almost like a registered keeper, if you like. So it's like you're going back and you're you're buying your manufacturer statement of origin. You're claiming the name that that's on your that's on your certified copy of an entry. It's the way that you can buy the name. And, yeah, and it's just a property. You've not. You've not. Yes, you've not become a corporation no, like every. No, no. I think that's where get, some people get a bit frightened because they get it's worried, got limited. I'm going to have a company. I've got benefits. What about this? Don't yeah, worry no, about I understand it. The problem, after, the, problem, the, problem, the, name. the problem with that is that no disrespect to anybody, because we all do have one, and that's our ego. Yes, the ego attaches ourselves to the name. So we have to detach ourselves from the name without the ego getting upset, basically. And it's not yeah. easy to do. No, it's no. Not, it's not easy, even if you know. I mean, it's not easy. I'd like Tegan has uh, done some really good presentations on this. You know, from the moment you're born, mm. you, you get given this name, and then it, from there it just goes, you know, year after year, happy birthday, you're in school, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Everything is done to indoctrinate you into being the name so that when you come of age you've got your legal entity and that's it they can really start on you you know they, they, for they me, really attach you to it for me it's quite easy it's 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 an easy thing to understand about the name and being separate from the name because um my past was in entertainment and i used to juggle a unicycle and what have you and somebody came up with this wise idea to you know to to sell me like an agent as the great ricardo well it there's just a just a name yeah. but they use that name and you go oh the great ricardo is going to be coming he's great <laughs> He's the great Ricardo. <laughs> and so I I knew it wasn't me because it's just a name. Yeah. But it it made this whole process so much easier for me. And I guess if if anyone's like I don't know, has a nom de plume as a writer or something. And again, what, it's a, what is it called? Alter ego. It's an alter yes, there absolutely. You there you go. Listen, chaps, um, we've got just gone over the hour, but this has been another another fascinating and gripping uh, episode. I do appreciate that, and I hopefully it's answered some of the questions that perhaps people were having in the uh, at the, as the last one and put into the comments. I know we had a, a few curious comments at the end of it, but we won't worry about the uh, the detractors because this is a process that is really there to help people rather than hinder anybody. Mm, totally. Uh, and a lot of the a lot of the people I didn't I don't read comments on things. Well, obviously, I had a glance over them. Yes, you get the naysayers, but there was a lot of people, and well done to them. You know, really sort of saying, "Well done, Richard." You know, bang, there's a lot of people that understand this, and we've we've even done some calls since where we've had people coming on over from Canada mm. and America, and they're really yeah, thank you, excited. thank they're you, watching, Richard, thank you. Yeah, for they're that, watching because, your show. You know, yeah, they're, they're, you've they're, got people they're, coming over to the Patreon and watching all the videos and getting all the tutorials and all that business so thank you we'll give you all the links again you know pop them in the yeah give me the give me the links that will be that will be grand then Um, they've got somewhere to come if they want to come and find us you know what i mean yeah no absolutely well i'm indebted to i'm indebted to to you guys for having worked it through being able to explain it as well because it's not it's not an easy thing to understand even though it's it's easy in principle Mm. (laughs) but it's you know trying to get your head around it for somebody who's completely new Obviously, it's a, a bit of a tricky thing, but um, it, it, we all got to start somewhere, and we're we've always got happy to start to come somewhere. Back, you know, indeed. We're happy Again, I'd back. just like to say thank you to Tegan, thank you to Alex, and thank you to yourself, Richard. Thank you. Well, no thank you, thank you all three. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I'll put a link also to the previous conversation that we had. So if if some of this was a bit baffling, go back to the first one, which is always uh, a good place to start. And of course, go to the uh, the academy and the links that I'll put for everything else and you can see all about it um and there's lots of interesting people there who can help you and guide you and and all those things which is great but i don't want to hold up everybody anymore so thank you so much for watching a big thanks to alex tegan and carl i'll be back with more monologues and other wonderful guests but in the meantime from us all thanks for watching and goodbye <laughs>